Yeah. Oh, where do you want me to fish? Well, I'll get this from here. Where do you, you sit? You can have this. I usually sit right here. You can have this hole. Okay, I might. Um, what if you I can do a couple more holes? Yeah. I usually fish the back hole. Okay. Those burgers. <laughs> Those are fat ones. Big. Big. Go bigger, go home. That's right. <laughs> Nobody's out here. No. Especially a freebie. Free fishing weekend. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's out. Maybe this afternoon it'll pick up a bit. Oh, yeah, it's turning. <sighs> nice. I think I might pop the barbs on that thing for the next one. <laughs> what do you got there? Okay. Yeah, maybe like a 30 inch. 20. Yeah, probably about 30. Big bait, big fish. That's right. He's this way. Yeah, because I can't see him. Yeah. I can't believe he didn't take mine. Okay, he's, he's coming back around. Is he? Yeah. He's not too far out. He's moving up by, yeah. Uh... He's interested in boy. I'm thinking. You should see it right away. Hang tight, it's coming. <laughs> All right, day two. Yesterday we just got one pike. Tried for some walleye this morning, not seen anything. It's not really a walleye spot, but I'm gonna go throw some tip ups out. I'm gonna try a little bit shallower this morning. The one we caught uh, was the, the shallow one yesterday, so I'm trying. Get another one a little bit shallower, maybe three feet of water or something. How deep you guess? Uh, not as much ice, I don't think. No? Four feet. How much? Four feet. Oh my. I think that's good. Yeah, we're gonna try four feet? Oh yeah. Holy, that came up in a hurry. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Oh, I'll tell you what though, this morning it is nice out. It's a little cooler, but no wind. Love it when there's no wind. All right, I'll take you to the setup. I'm just putting the tip up down. Uh, just gonna clean this hole a little bit more. So where we're sitting, we have a uh, good view of the tip ups. Like, so we had this one out yesterday. Should have been able to see it like instantly, but of course we were cooking lunch. M missed it for whatever a minute. The, the pike that I caught yesterday just garbled this thing down. And I do have, um, I left two barbs um, unpinched on my hook and I guess that's why they always say if you're catching release make sure you pinch the barbs so kind of learned a bit of a lesson yesterday I thought you know having the, the barbs on wouldn't be that big of a deal because you know we're we're looking right at it you know you get there quick they hopefully don't take it too deep pretty easy to get out wasn't the case kind of screwed up so live and learn all the barbs are pinched today Alright, so how I'm going to hook this thing is I'm just going to go to this side of the back here. I like to just push them straight through and then kind of just push it in. It kind of pulls a little bit, but if you just get the hooks underneath, there's a, a backbone there. It'll just hold them in there. And I would have liked to have this a little thought out better, but when you're kind of camping outdoors, you just kind of got to make do with the refrigeration that you got. So it'll go down though. So we're gonna pop the deucer down. So now we've got about four feet of uh, fluoro on here right now. So I don't wanna be too much deeper than that. I gotta bump my gain up here. Right, let's keep going until I see that beat start to drop there. 
there she goes. Um, make sure my wide beam's on. All right, so I got it figured out. I just had to turn my gain way up just because it was so shallow. This wasn't picking it up. But anyway, it's right here. Actually, right where my fluoro is is um, right where I want to be for depth. So I'm just going to reel this thing up to where my knot is there. So I got 20 pound braided, 20 pound fluoro. And then the uh, four inch leader. All right. Hey. So you just set that down, kind of turn the flag to where you're looking so you can see it better. Set the trip. When a pike comes, it'll reel out. I'll turn that and your flag will pop up. Really easy to use, super effective. <clears throat> Definitely helps to spread out and it can kind of get you thinking about different depths like we are today. <clears throat> The shock's in about 10 foot. We did have some pike rolling through there. They just weren't weren't committing. This one here in about <clears throat> six and a half foot caught. So put that one there and the other one over at four feet and see what happens. <laughs> well, the nice thing about having a slow morning is you can have a coffee and cook some bacon. Yeah. Take a peek. Got her? Yeah. Nice. Ah, uh, same as yours, I guess. Oh, well, that's a little bit bigger. Yeah. Did you bring the camera? Um, I got the GoPro here. <laughs> If you get on flat, I can get the tail here. Okay. And head up. 33. Yeah, 33. Nice. Nice. It's a good, good thick fish. Yeah, it's full. Cool. If you want to hold it in the water. All right, getting the hashies ready. Just about done. Cook them a little bit of the bacon grease. Should be good. Alright, so we're gonna pull one of our lines out of the shack and then throw another tip up out. So for pike fishing for bigger baits, I use um, like a three different treble hooks on on a little setup. You can buy them; they're they're not cheap, but they're not super expensive either. I just went out and made my own because we used to do a lot of tip up fishing. So I uh, brought some of the stuff here. So Dale was asking me about them, and I just happened to have the stuff in my tackle box and we're just sitting here doing nothing so we're gonna make a couple of these hooks so I'll try and show you guys how I do it all right so you need a couple supplies so we got some hooks we got a size four size eight I think they're eight or sixes maybe six um, and so this one's gonna be more like a belly hook on a, like a jumbo smelt or something like that uh, leader wire your little crimping pieces here and the crimping tool. So the cool thing about making your own is you can make it however you want. And Dale just made me a coffee. Thanks, Dale. <laughs> All right, so loop your wire through, loop the bat through. We're gonna crimp it. All right, so the typical bait that Dale wants to use is gonna be a little bit smaller than this, so we'll kind of set it up so it'd be like small for this. So, do you want like a belly hook or a back hook with this bigger one? What would you like? Because you can kind of do uh, both. I think just the one hook, I think. And you want like a belly hook? Yeah, belly hook, yeah. Belly hook? Okay. So, belly hook. With this one, it, it's kind of bigger, but those jumbo smelts, kind of once you belly hook, this will be on the back. So, how I'll set this one up is we'll have one wire going over to each side. So we'll kind of get our length here, and then when you add the length of the hook, really, well, let's make sure we check. Maybe. So really, as long as our hook's somewhere right around there, that's really the length that we need. 
for our hook to go in, that'll give us around the back the length of the hook to go around uh, front and back. So we'll get that set up and then we'll cut some wire and then we'll show you the rest of that said hook. So we'll clean that up after. Basically we wanted about you much length. Um, and then on a setup like this, I mean, you got tons of hooks. If you got all the barbs in there, make a mess. Like you're just, you're not getting it out. So go ahead, pinch your barbs off. Good to go. We'll show you when we get it set up. All right, send her home. <laughs> we did put it on the big jumbo smelt here. So the big, big one. Probably got it on here. It's coming into view. And it is hanging and swimming and like a nice piece of bait. Got spreaders and pliers. I mean, we could take these better pliers. Yep. This one was set pretty low. I wouldn't expect those. A little bit. I should get that. I feel like I can feel the weight of the bait and there's nothing. Oh, yeah, oh. You're not on the bottom of the ice, are you? Yeah, I think so. All right, so we couldn't get the tip up back in. Um, we got the camera down the hole. We thought maybe it was caught on the edge of the ice, but we kind of put a bar down. We could see that the, the line went pretty sharp over to one direction, uh, right behind some rocks. Um, we couldn't really like, follow the whole line in the distance, but it, it looked pretty tight headed uh, that way in the angle. It's only um, like four feet of water, so wondering if uh, something took it, went, maybe got caught behind some rocks and spit it out there or whatever, but um, I had about a four foot liter of uh, fluoro on, so we got the got it pulled pretty tight, yanked it, it broke right at the, the fluoro liter, so there would only be about four feet of line there so I'm just kind of happy to know that you know if there would have been a uh, fish on the other end of it we would have seen it so pretty confident that something took it whether it got caught or just dropped it ended up behind some rocks and that's what it got caught on so happy that there's not a fish out there with a hook in its mouth but it's actually really nice that you know I never really use the camera when I fish but it's nice to put that down and actually see what was going on there otherwise I would have been popping a bunch of holes with uh hauling the mega live around and panning out just to make sure there wasn't fish caught up in the rocks anywhere in the area so um anyways we got it out retied back down hopefully we can get a another fish well we didn't catch any more fish but whatever it was pretty awesome to spend time with my buddy dale uh, it was also awesome to see his ice shack and what he did with it, it kind of gives me a little bit of ideas for what i'm going to do with mine next year we also had a fun time using the Mega Live and the live camera. Uh, as you can see in the first little bit of this, that one fish that came in had like that weird hunchback. And then uh, this one rolling through has got this kind of like weird stubby face. So I don't know what was up with these fish, but it was kind of cool to see. Um, the Mega Live was pretty good at panning around and seeing these pike cruising like 50 to 60 feet away. So it was pretty cool to anticipate them coming in and and uh, unfortunately they just weren't biting too hard that day but uh, nonetheless we had a fun time thanks for watching please leave a comment like subscribe if you feel the need and more than anything just hope you enjoyed the video have a good one